right, hello, greetings. Uh, let's take a look at uh, exercise 6.5. So this is our chapter six homework. And so in our chapter six homework, we are continuing to build upon our friction factor code, which we started, I believe it was back in chapter two when we first introduced scripts. So for exercise 6.5, we're asked to build upon your friction factor code from exercise 5.2, uh, specifically your Moody chart. You're asked to vectorize your function and eliminate the for loop. As a hint, remember your work from exercise 4.4. And then within the problem statement that I have posted on Canvas, right, there's not much here, um, but the suggestion is essentially just you know, try and incorporate, use this as an opportunity to try and incorporate the skills that we learned in chapter six. And so the new skills that we learned in chapter six is, is one, uh, vectorizing our functions. So the idea that our functions can take vector inputs uh, and return vector outputs, which shouldn't seem like much of an extension, uh, and then two was this idea of putting multiple functions within a file. Right? Motivation for putting multiple functions in a file is that rather than say having two separate M files that I'm going to submit for a homework assignment, um, to be able to you know, include everything just in a single M file that I'm keeping track of. All right? So putting multiple functions in a file, make it easier for say submissions in another class, easier for documenting your work, all right? and things of that nature. Um, and so and again, the link to, to 5.2 is just the details of our friction factor problem again. And then we're focusing in on part B, or we're told to focus in on part B, um, the part in which we're generating our Moody diagrams. And so what I have downloaded over here um, in MATLAB is I have our script um, from chapter five, which just called on our function to, to solve the two different cases. And then we had our friction factor code here. And so our friction factor code has its, has as an input the Reynolds number of relative roughness and returns back uh, the friction factor. Okay. Cool. Um, and so the first part of this task uh, asks us to or challenges us to uh, vectorize our function so that I can eliminate this for loop that I had before my script. And so I'm going to do that first. I'm going to start by vectorizing my function. Um, make sure that my script runs as normal. Then I can eliminate my for loop, make sure that runs as normal. Uh, and then we can continue to build from there. Um, but yeah, and you know, last kind of comment about functions is remember, but I can't emphasize enough, you know, part of the motivation of functions is once I get it working, I, I have this black box, right? I have this beautiful black box called friction factor where I know in goes Reynolds, out comes rel in goes Reynolds relative roughness, out comes friction factor. And so part of the beauty of this black box is one, I, I you know, have this ability to perform these calculations, but then it also simplifies my code, not just in terms of simplifying in terms of length, but simplifying in terms of making it very clear in terms of understanding the logic, All right? So when I see in line seven here, right, line seven, I'm calculating the friction factor for given Reynolds and relative roughness, right? It's as simple as that. But anyways, first task is vectorizing the code. And so when I think about vectorizing the code, uh, I'm not thinking about linear algebra. So what I'm, my approach then is I'm going to look at my function and I'm going to look for all cases of multiplication, division, and exponentiation. And I would convert those to element-wise operations. Um, such that if I do that for this function here, um, this should work where if I were to specify a Reynolds number and a vector of relative roughnesses, it would return back a vector of friction factors or if I provide a vector of Reynolds numbers and a relative roughness should return back a vector of uh, friction factors. So I'm just looking at my function and I'm gonna try and identify uh, all cases of multiplication, division, and exponentiation and I'm gonna convert those to element-wise operations. Um, if there's an operation that I make element-wise that didn't need to be element-wise, that is okay. Okay, it'll work exactly the same. Okay. And so that's why I say I'm just looking for all so that I make sure I get the behavior that I want to get. Okay, I'm just going to look through it one more time. And if I were to miss one, right, it would just flag an error for the case of a vector of Reynolds or relative roughnesses. That would point me to where that error happened, and I'd be able to come back and troubleshoot and fix. Okay. 
good. And so as my first test, okay, I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to run my function. Really, I should have ran it before I messed with it. Okay, but I just want to run. Okay, that looks like it's working correctly. Okay, my figure window pops up over here, right, and that looks like it's working correctly. Okay, good. So I didn't break anything. So then the next thing I want to look at is, um, let me actually rename this. I'm going to call this Chapter 6 Homework. It's just, just so it doesn't cause any confusion uh, if I were to upload it. So the next thing I'm going to look at is it says, okay, now that we have this uh, vectorized code, can we lim eliminate our for loops and make this even more efficient? And so if I do that, I don't need to pre-size my vectors uh, f1 and f2 to store the two different cases of the friction factor. Okay, I don't need my for loop. Okay, and actually, I'm just going to keep this commented out for now, and then we can delete it. But then the updated command would just look like, okay, I'm going to copy and paste. Okay, instead of having to point to a particular element of f1, I can just pass to it my entire vector of Reynolds numbers. And then I can do the same thing for f2. Okay, you should be able to pass the entire vector of Reynolds and do the calculation for the entire case. I don't need to pre-size f1 and f2 right, because the calculation is going to result in a vector of friction factors. I'm not computing one scalar at a time uh, and so there's no need to, to pre-size. So if I minimize and save that. Now if I run it, I get exactly the same thing. Um, and yeah, good. So I haven't broken anything. Seemed like it was a little faster, but we haven't discussed function handles uh, yet, so we can't quite yet play with um, the time it function. Okay. So I'm just going to change this to computing. Okay. And that would be my script having eliminated the for loop. Okay. Cool. All right, so let's kind of continue to, to build upon this. Okay. And so as I build upon this, this friction factor code, I know it works, right? So I'm gonna think of this as a, as a black box. All right, in goes a Reynolds number and relative roughness, out comes friction factor, right? Or if I give it a vector Reynolds number and a relative roughness, out comes friction factor. Okay, so my goal is not to touch this. Um, what I wanna, touch or when I want to begin to build up is I want to begin to try to simplify this a little bit. Um, and what I want to do is I want to create a function um, where if I give it, uh, maybe I had a flag, um, or I, I want to create a function that'll uh, generate uh, a plot of uh, friction factors. Um, and so yeah, right, so you said to, to focus on B. So again, I'm not messing with this, okay? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new function, okay? And I'm gonna call this one, uh, say, friction factor plot, okay? And as I think about friction factor plot, right, it's gonna look pretty, pretty similar to this, right? I know that I'm gonna create a, a vector of Reynolds numbers, Okay, I'll need a relative roughness. So maybe if I'm thinking about the function, I'm gonna want inputs of say, um, you know, my minimum Reynolds number, my maximum Reynolds number. If I want the number of data points, I, I could include that. I'm gonna need a relative roughness, okay, at least one relative roughness, and we can discuss how to look at multiple cases. Um, and then I wanted to generate the, the plot in, in format. Okay, can we do this? Yeah, of course we can. Um, so let's do it. So I'm going to generate this friction factor uh, function, and I'm going to start by writing a script. Okay. And so as I think about kind of what my preconditions might be, um, I mean, I guess the information for lens space we can get as a scalar or a, a vector. Um, we discussed taking as a as a vector input. Um, so so I'm going to have this. Let me call it like RE range. So RE range is going to be a vector. Think of it as a vector where element one is the lower bound and 
to is the upper bound. Okay, cool. And you could even make it so that you know element three, and let's do element one's lower bound, two's the upper bound. Three is number of data points. Okay, cool. So then maybe if I create my vector Reynolds numbers, it's going to look like lint space, and then I'll just pass to it this re. Maybe I call it setup. Okay. And so this for now will be a vector that I'll create. So before we went from 1e to the 2 to 1e to the 5, and we had 1,000 data points. Okay. So when I create my vector Reynolds numbers, I can just create, create it like such. Okay. And I guess you could just as well um, have modified this just to pass the, the entire vectors of Reynolds numbers too, but but all's good. Okay, if we're, if we're just playing here, I'm going to need um, a relative roughness. Okay, okay. and so I'm just going to define one. So what's on line six and then line twelve will eventually become inputs. And so let me just make this zero point one for now, and then. So similar to defining Reynolds number of relative roughness, okay, I'm going to compute the friction factor. box and the last part was was plotting and we had a series of, of plot commands okay. and I'm gonna copy and paste this and then I'm gonna modify it okay so I'm gonna start by modifying it well let me let me keep it simple we'll, let's start with this so we'll have log log uh, that hold on in case we end up plotting more and then we'll call it just like this so if I were to run this, oop, friction factor plot, doo, doo, doo. ah, it's because I, I passed the entire vector. What I need is should be already set up one, one, re set up. Two, then R E set up three. Okay. So this works, right? And I get a plot just like I did before. Okay. As I start to build this up and generalize it, the first thing I want to do is since E D, we're going to make that an input. I don't want to hard code the legend here um, with the specific value of E D. And so how I'm going to do that is to generate um, label for data set. Okay. I'm going to use this function num to string. Well, first I'm going to create um, a base name. Okay, so this e to me this base part ed equals. So it's going to be ed equals. Okay. okay, and then for kind of the the individual name for for that one case would be. Um, To call like set name because there's a function num to string and the first argument to num to string is just the variable that I want to convert to a string in this case ed okay and just so you can see this play out if I were to type num well so if I had you know type four right it's a four it's a <laughs> it's a float but if I type num to string four all right converts it to Character array. Okay, so if I were to do num to string 42, all right, it's a character array. So remember, in a character array, this is really a vector of characters. First element's four, second element's two. Okay. 
So um, it's ANS. So if I typed ANS1, right, it's just 4. All right, so coming back to friction factor plot then. Okay, so num to string of ED will create a character array, which in this case will be first element 0, then 1, or decimal point, then 1. So to get my full name, it'll be, I'll have to combine them in a, a character array, right? So combine these two vectors, catenate these two vectors. And I do that as, I'm gonna create a vector where the first part of it is base name. So base name will give me this character array, comma, because I'm stitching it onto a row, the set name. So then what I can do here is under legend, I can replace the string I had before with what I'm calling full name. Okay. So now if I run this, okay, I should get exactly the same result, all right, which I do. Okay. Fantastic. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually something that came up in class that I learned, and it's going to be a small modification. And so the small modification is when I first open the figure, okay, before I plot anything, I'll put it after clear figure, is I'm going to do legend, and then I'm just going to provide the option show, right? So this just says I want to show my legend and my graph. And then what I can do is I can augment my plot command. In this case, it's log log. And I'm going to use display name. Okay. And then the name that I'm going to I'm going to assign to that data. Yeah. The name that I'm going to display. Yeah. The name that I'm going to assign to that data set that I'm going to display in the legend, which I said to you show, is this full name. Okay. And this will just make it simpler. Um, if we go down to generalize this to plot multiple data sets. But just to show that this is working, it's not working, right? it doesn't show. Oh, so what did I do? I think, um, so what I need to do is I put it, it should be show. Legend show should be display name, full name, which is that. That should work. Oh man, it's not working. Legend show. Not the CLF bits goofing it up. Boy, now I am puzzled as to why it's not working. to resort back the moment. So this should be fine still. Yeah, that just changes the color. Sorry, now I've got to troubleshoot on the fly. This should work. And I'm not sure what I did to break it. The whole line needed to come after the log log. the show flag, but um, all right, 
Well, you might just need to leave it at this for now. So for some reason, it's not displaying as I expected. So let me just keep the legend on there. And then once we get more than one data set, we can go through and try and troubleshoot. All right, so I will attempt to troubleshoot once we get more um, data on there. Okay. But all right, so now I have this function okay, that, that is working, right? And this has the effect of generating a plot. And so what I'd like to do is I would like to um, turn this into a function. So I'm going to create a new function. Um, and I'm not going to have an output at this point, but I'm going to call this friction factor plot. Okay, and friction factor plot. I have the outputs there in a second. Put in my end, and I'm going to tab it in. And so then my inputs for friction factor plot is going to be this um, variable re setup, in which I give my range of Reynolds numbers. It's going to be a vector. I'm going to give the range of Reynolds numbers and the number of data points to consider. Um, I'll create my Reynolds number vector. And then I'm also going to input my, or provide my relative roughness as an input variable. So that'll be ED. And we'll start with just those two in terms of generalizing it. Okay. So as I think about my chapter six homework, Okay, so this part is, you know, okay. Well, so what I can do then is I can create a vector re setup. And re setup is, I'm just going to copy the elements here from Linspace. So range of Reynolds and um, number of points. We have two different cases of relative roughness. I'm just going to look at the one for now. So I'm going to, I'm going to compute the one. And again, what I want to do is I want to generate the plot. So I'm just going to call friction factor plot. And this is do 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 re setup and ed one that I'm going to give as inputs. And then I don't need any of this. So my hope is this has the effect of generating a plot. This is too many output arguments. So if I go to friction factor plot, we don't have any outputs. Oh, it says here. All right, friction factor plot, I have it set up so it's just plotting the results. I mean, if I also want to return the friction factors, right? Let me just do that. Let me return the friction factors just in case I want them. So then that notation will, will work. Okay, cool. I get my result just as I want or expect. Okay, now does it work if I look at two cases? Okay, so can I call? So now I need to give it re setup instead. Can I call my friction factor code twice? Right. No, I only get the one. Okay, so what's going on? So it doesn't work if I call it twice. Okay, what's probably going on is I have this CLF case. All right, I'm going to clear the figure uh, after I display the first case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another variable called my CLF flag. Okay, and CLF flag will just be uh, past this an argument of, of one if you need to clear the figure or zero if, if you don't. Okay. So maybe the first time I'm plotting it's okay if I clear the figure. But the second time I'm plotting, right, adding to that figure, I don't want to. Okay. So clear figure, okay, um, I'll just, you know, add a note. CLF, CLF flag is an integer used as a flag variable to determine if um, I should clear my figure. Okay, cool. A one is true, zero is false. 
really zero or anything else. Okay, and so what I can do then here is if CLF flag equals equals one, all right, if it's true, and you know the thing is I don't even need equals equals one. Okay, won't let me tab it in. All right, it doesn't need to be equals equals one. I could just do if CLF flag, but I'm going to do equals equals one. Right, just so it's you know clear in my head. Um, so if this is true, then clear the figure. Um, otherwise, don't. So if I come back to my chapter six homework, okay. updated the call here. Oh, because this needs to call friction factor plot, which might have been the other part of my problem of why it wasn't plotting. Cool, so now I have the plot, my legend's goofed up. We'll get to that legend in a second. We'll try and get her display working correctly. Um, but the color, right, the color would be more, be great if I could differentiate. And so what I might do for the color, is here I'm specifying that it's black, okay. Let me not specify it's black. So what should happen is I run, it'll just cycle through the colors, right, so blue, then red. But I've got to get this legend right. So the issue with the legend um, is, in this case, it won't. So first time through, I'm plotting data set one in figure one, and I'm saying, you know, use this as the name for set one. Then I plot a second set of data, but when I call my legend command, I'm just referencing still um, set one. So it should be that I, I, I'm actually puzzled why this isn't working. Okay, I'm gonna. Try again. Oh, so now when I have more than one set of data, this works. Okay. Um, so let me do this then. Um, and so now it, it works, right? So what was puzzling me, me before? So if I have more than one data set, right, on that figure, um, and I don't do the clear figure, so let me do if. Um, so let me just do this, right? So I, I told you that it doesn't even need to be equals equals one, because one is just true. Okay, cool. So let me do this then. So if it's clear figure, do that. And then let me do else, right? It's not, you don't need to clear the figure, but I'm gonna do a legend show. Okay, and actually, no, I'm not going to do that because whether or not I had show on there, it didn't really make a difference. What I need though is if CLF flag, then it appears that I need to add the label via the legend command. Okay, cool. So if I come back to this now and I run just case one, beautiful. Now if I run case two, where I don't clear my figure, when I plot the second data set, beautiful. Sweet, we're, we're, man, now we're really taking shape. This looks, this looks pretty good. Okay, so um, what else could I, I do to my figure? Okay, what else could I do, right? So we have the clear uh, flag. Um, we could also update this, so you specified the uh, figure number if you wanted to. Um, Maybe instead of plotting in the same figure, you want to plot in different figures. So maybe this is, you know, say a variable flag num. So maybe I have another clear flag, and then I have maybe flag num. Okay. And so, in this case, maybe I want to plot both on figure one. Okay. If I add both data sets to figure one, I get exactly what I had before. Maybe the first one I want on figure one, and the second one on figure two. Okay, and so I'm going to apply clear figure to, to both, right, as I plot them. And now I get figure one, all right, and I get figure two, right? They're both the same color, but that's because right now I'm just cycling through uh, colors. And you can get as crazy, crazy as you want. You could also pass, you know, kind of the, the color, right, could also be an, an input variable. Um, so I could, you know, as an option, right, we had dash K before, we specified it was black, right, that's nothing more than a character, right, so that could also be um, an input variable uh, if you wanted. Okay. Cool, 
All right, so now I have this friction factor plot function that, that looks like it's working right. We have this friction factor black box right that is working as it was before. Okay. Um, and so, you know, really I should probably add some documentation here. And so my documentation might look like my function signature, so I know what's going on. Okay. And then my ones that aren't clear here is actually let me um, function to plot the friction factor versus Reynolds number. Okay. RE setup is a vector with the range of RE values and number of points. CLF flag. Um, so it'd be one if it is the first is if it is the first or only set um, on a figure. Okay. Otherwise, you know, we make it zero. Um, so it clears flag and then it gets the legend set up correctly, and then flag num um, specifies the figure number to plot it. Okay. So that's cool. All right. So now I have this function, and what I can do though is I'm going to package everything together, and so I'm going to take this rather than have to have the two of these in two separate m files within the same directory. I'm going to plot or paste this okay, below right as a helper function. Um, and you know, just so I take the leap of faith, just to be able to demonstrate, if I close friction factor, okay, I'm going to delete it from here. Okay, and remember, if I look back at the chapter five homework, all right, this would be how I could call friction factor. If I were to paste that down here, right, it doesn't work. Okay, and remember the issue is, is friction factor. Okay, it's a helper function, right? It's not the so within my file I have my top function. The top function is what I can, you know, see or call from my command window, and then my helper function, um, I can't call it directly from my command window. My top function can reference it and call it, but I can't call it directly from my command window. So now if I go back to this chapter six homework script, all right, still works exactly as we called it last. Okay. But now it's just um, calling this the single file. All right, and you know we could spend time, we could go even more crazy, we could you know add uh, options to to save our figure um, and do things of that nature, um, but. I mean, I, I guess we, you know, maybe call it by its, you know, figure number. So let me close that. Um, so you know, we could create a variable just like this, which is say figure, and then we could actually use flag num um, and give it an extension. But it's, I don't know. Well, let me, let me just do it just to just be. So if I wanted like a save fig flag, maybe I have a save fig flag, okay, save fig equals one if we should save our figure, all right, and what that might look like is, let's just add another one now that it's plotted, if save fig, okay, and what do I want to do if it's save fig? I need to create a. Oh, I need. I'm going to use some variables to create a name, and so. So maybe the base fig name is. Figure, and then I'll do like an underscore, and I'll put the number in there. Um, and then the base num. And then the fig. Num would be num to string. And I have a variable for it. It is called it flag num. Um, and then maybe the fig extension though. 
I also need that. That's a dot ex or dot fig. And so if I put it all together, figure name would be the base fig name. I need the fig num, and then I need the fig extension. And so I can do save fig. Oh, and do save fig. I'm pretty sure it's a save fig uh, save fig command, and then give it figure. Cool. So let's try this. So now, if I come back here, okay, I give it a flag of zero. I don't want to save the figure. Too many inputs. Oh, I put save fig up in the signature, but I forgot to put save fig here. And actually, I don't want to call. I don't want to call it save fig, because that's that's the name. I call it save fig flag. All right, I don't want to call it save fig because that's the name of my command. That's the name of the function, right? The command to save my figure. So I don't want to name my variable the same thing. If I run this, I've got figure one and figure two. Nothing is saved. I change this to a one. Let's see. So I've got figure two, figure one. And did it save? Yeah, look, I've got figure one right here. And I have figure two dot fig right there. Look at that. Automating naming them as well. Okay, Cool. You could do the same thing. You could do like a print flag if you want to save them as, you know, PNGs in another format. You could do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this is me packaging those two up. Okay. Uh, this one's even nicer than in a class in terms of, um, you know, what we did with it. And, you know, if you want to print, right, we could do something just like save fig, um, but we could print it as you know, and file extension could even be the user specifies the you know file or the figure type. Um, user could specify color, right? We could go crazy in terms of customization and just adding logical flags to um, get those cases. But um, yeah, that's some that's some pretty awesome code. Um, hope that helps, right? Part of doing all this too was trying to incorporate some of our skills from from chapter six and, and earlier. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you want to go even more crazy building this up, we, we could do that. But that's it for, for this video. We'll see you soon.